Hello folks and goats, my name is Griffin and welcome to Deep Within the Command Valley for another Caltime Deck Tech. Before we begin, I just wanted to mention that this episode and this podcast is sponsored by Game Grid. If you are looking for any of the cards in this deck or the full deck list, we'll include it in the show notes below and you can take it right to Game Grid's website, put in those cards into their deck builder toolkit, and get those cards delivered right to your house. Helps them out and it helps us out in the process. Another reminder that this episode and podcast is brought to you by you and our patrons at patreon.com slash command valley. If you are looking for the best way to support us and the podcast, then feel free to head on over to patreon.com slash command valley. Check out our awesome perks, exclusive content, and other awesome benefits of being a patron. All right, without further ado, let's jump into our deck tech for Orvar the All Form. Orvar the All Form is three and a blue for a 3-3 legendary creature shapeshifter with changeling. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, if it targets one or more other permanents you control, create a token that's a copy of one of those permanents. And when a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard this card, create a token that's a copy of target permanent. Now we do not care about that second line of text at all. What we really care about is the first, being able to create token copies of any permanent when we target them with an instant or sorcery spell. So this includes enchantments, artifacts, creatures, and even lands. We can create land tokens with this deck. That's really, really exciting. Now, over the course of Magic's history, there have been a lot of very cheap, reusable spells that don't do anything but target a permanent, which means we can use these cards in Orvar to be able to copy all the things that we have in this deck, whether it be the enchantments, artifacts, lands, creatures, there's gonna be a lot of choices. For instance, let's look at a card called Artificial Evolution. Artificial Evolution is one blue for an instant, and it reads, change the text of target spell or permanent by replacing all instances of one creature type with another. The new creature type can't be wall. We don't really care about changing creature types at all, really, but what we do care about is that it targets a spell or permanent. We can target any permanent that we have, and if we have Orvar out, we make a token copy of that permanent. But it only applies to your things, so you can copy all the things that you want there is no restriction, any permanent, which means we have lots of exciting things in this deck. First off, let's go over the let's go over all the cards that we have in this deck that are very cheap that target a permanent that we control to create token copies of them with Orvar. First off, we have Aquatex Will, which is one blue for a sorcery tribal, Merfolk, put a flood counter on target land. That land is an island in addition to its other types for as long as it has a flood counter on it. And if you control Merfolk, draw a card. Aquatex Will only targets lands, however, it does draw us a card, which is a benefit. Artful Dodge is one blue for a sorcery. Target creature can't be blocked this turn, and it has flashback for a blue, so you can use it twice on creatures. Clock Spinning is one blue for an instant with buyback for three generic. Choose a counter on target permanent or suspend a card. Remove that counter from that permanent or card or put another one of those counters on it. Again, this card doesn't care if there are actually any counters on those permanents. You can still target it with Clock Spinning. Distortion Strike is one blue for a sorcery. Target creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn and can't be blocked. And it also has Rebound. Mind Bend is one blue for an instant. Change the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one color word with another or one basic land type with another. This is really nice. Targets any permanent. Mind Games is one blue for an instant with buyback two and a blue. Tap target artifact, creature, or land. Moonlace is one blue for an instant. Target spell or permanent becomes colorless. Shadow Rift for one blue is an instant. Target creature gains shadow until end of turn and also draw a card. Slip Through Space is one blue for a devoured sorcery. Target creature can't be blocked this turn and also draws you a card. Thermal Flux is one blue for an instant. Choose one. Target non-snow permanent becomes snow until end of turn. Or target snow permanent isn't snow until end of turn. And draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Trait Doctoring is one blue for sorcery. Change the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one color word with another or one basic land type with another until end of turn. And it also has Cypher. The best cards in this deck are the ones that you're going to be able to reuse multiple times. So the fact that this has Cypher makes it very, very efficient. Whim of Volrath is one blue for an instant with buyback two. Change the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one color word for another or one basic land type with another until end of turn. Again, we don't care that we're changing colors of anything. We're just caring that it targets something. And the fact that it has buyback two, which means you can keep using it for three mana, super, super good. Glamour Die is one and a blue for an instant. Changes the text of a target spell or permanent, but it also has retrace, so you can cast it from your graveyard by discarding a land. Then we have Hidden Strings, which is one and a blue for a sorcery. You may tap or untap target permanent, and then you may tap or untap another target permanent, and it also has Cypher on this as well. 
those are all the cards that we have that target something. It doesn't really matter what it does, whether it changes the color of it or makes a creature unblockable. We just care that it's targeting our stuff so we can copy it with Orvar. So now that we've gone through all the ways of being able to target our stuff with very cheap, efficient spells, let's talk about the things that we're going to want to copy. The most important thing that I'll want to be copying in this deck if I'm playing Orvar is going to be the card draw spells. Because we have so many very cheap spells that target our stuff, we're going to be running out of cards really fast. So we want to make sure that we can refill our hands, especially by copying and making tokens of our card draw. So first up, we've got Augur's Bolas, which is one in a blue for a merfolk wizard. And when it enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library. Reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Cloud Seer is two in a blue for a 2-1 with flying. And when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Solemn Simulacrum is four generic for an artifact creature. And when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land and put that card onto the battlefield tapped. And when it dies, draw a card. Mold Drifter is four and a blue for a 2-2 elemental with flying, and when it ETBs, draw two cards, and you can also evoke it for two and a blue. Mystic Remora is one blue for an enchantment with a cumulative upkeep cost of one. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you may draw a card, unless that player pays four. Now, this isn't the best thing to copy, since you still have to pay the cumulative upkeep on each of your copies of Mystic Remora, but I think it's okay to, if the cumulative upkeep cost is going to be too expensive, maybe it's three generic, then you can just copy it, make a token copy of it, starts off at one again, and you can sacrifice the one that's been there for a couple turns. Confounded Conundrum is one in a blue for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, if that player had another land enter the battlefield under their control this turn, they return a land they control to its owner's hand. Kind of confusing, but it's really a double whammy in this deck. Number one, it draws a card when it enters the battlefield, so that when we create token copies of it, it recycles cards in our hand. So when we make a token copy of it, we will also draw a card, but it stops our opponents from mana ramping. Since we're just in blue, we don't have access to that massive mana ramp that green has or green decks have. And if you have multiple of them out, then they're very punished for mana ramping. Fate Foretold is one in a blue for an aura. Enchant creature, when Fate Foretold enters the battlefield, draw a card. And when enchanted creature dies, its controller draws a card. This is really, really nice because we can copy Fate Foretold and we can just keep putting those enchantments on Orvar so that even if it does get removed by a kill spell or a board wipe, then we'll be able to refill our hands very quickly. And obviously we have Ristic Study in here, which is two in the blue for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless that pair pays one. And you know, what's better than one Ristic Study? How about three Ristic Studies? Am I right? All right, so those are the card draw permanents that we can copy with our spells with Orvar. Next, we're going to talk about the ways to be able to get those instants and sources back into our hand to reuse them, because that's the second most important thing we'll need in this deck. For instance, we have Archaeomancer, which is two blue blue for a 1-2 human wizard, and when he enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcerer card from your graveyard to your hand. Now, Archaeomancer is very good in this deck because we can keep returning those instant and sorcerer cards back to our hand so we can keep copying our permanents. Another one we have is Salvager of Secrets, which is 3 blue blue for a 2-2 two, two wizard. When it enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcerer card from your graveyard to your hand. Same thing as Archaeomancer, just one more mana. Shipwreck Dowser also does the same thing, but it has prowess. Scholar of Ages is 5 blue blue for a 3-3 human wizard, but it returns 2 instant or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand instead of just 1. And then lastly, we've got the Mirari Conjecture, which is a saga for 4 and a blue. First chapter, return target instant card from your graveyard to your hand. Chapter 2, return target sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. And chapter number 3, until end of turn, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it, you may choose new targets for the copy. Probably one of the best things that you can copy in this deck because not as much enchantment removal and it does everything that we want it to do. All right, so now that we've created token copies of our permanents that draw cards, we've created token copies of permanents that return our instant and sorcery cards back from the graveyard to our hand. Let's talk about the big baddies that we want to copy, the things that are going to end the game and let us pull off with a win. So first up are our token makers. Now these are very famous in blue for giving us value off of casting our instant and sorcery spells. For instance, Talrand the Sky Summoner is two blue blue for a 2-2 Merfolk Wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a 2-2 blue drake creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Now it is a legendary creature, so you can't copy Talrand Sky Summoner, but we can copy Murmuring Mystic, which for three and a blue, we have a 1-5, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-1 blue bird illusion creature token with flying. So you can keep copying Murmuring Mystic, get a ton of 1-1 flying illusions, and swing out for the win. 
But we're not done there. We also have Docent of Perfection, which is three blue blue for a 5-4 Insector with flying. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a 1-1 blue human wizard creature token onto the battlefield. Then if you control three or more wizards, transform Docent of Perfection. And he transforms into Final Iteration, a 6-5 Eldrazi Insect with flying. Wizards you control get plus two plus one and have flying. And, when, and it still makes wizards when you cast instant or sorcery spells. And my personal favorite that you're definitely going to want to copy is Master of Waves. For three and a blue, we have a 2-1 Merfolk Wizard with protection from red. Elemental creatures you control get plus one plus one. And when he enters the battlefield, put a number of one zero blue elemental creature tokens onto the battlefield equal to your devotion to blue. Now, number one, we're only playing blue, so you can be sure that our devotion is going to be very high when we cast Master of Waves. Number two, you can create token copies of Master of Waves, which create more tokens and also buffs them up, very quickly can get out of hand. For our non-token creating haymakers, we've got Sower of Temptation, which is two blue blue for a fairy wizard. And when he enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature as long as Sower of Temptation remains in play. Peregrine Drake is four and a blue for a flying 2-3 Drake, and when he enters the battlefield, untap up to five lands. Very, very cool for acceleration because you can keep copying the Peregrine Drake and untap your lands. Very easy to pop off with Peregrine Drake. Draining Welk is four blue blue for a 1-1 one, one illusion with flash and flying, and when he enters the battlefield, counter target spell, put X plus one plus one counters on Draining Welk, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. If you can manage to cast this spell, then all of those one mana spells in your hand also read one blue counter target spell by making token copies of Draining Welk. Duplicant is six generic for an artifact shapeshifter with imprint. When he enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-token creature. For as long as a card exiled with Duplicant is a creature card, Duplicant has the power, toughness, and creature types of the last creature card exiled with Duplicant. And it's still a shapeshifter. Agent of Treachery is five blue blue for a two three human rogue. When he enters the battlefield, gain control of target permanent. And at the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. This is going to be very easy to do because we only have to copy Agent of Treachery twice. Scourge of Fleets is five blue blue for a 6-6 six, six Kraken. When he enters the battlefield, return each creature your opponent's control with toughness X or less to its owner's hands, where X is the number of islands you control. Probably the best one-sided board wipe we have in this game, especially since it is reusable. Tidespout Tyrant is five blue 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 for a 5-5 five, five Flying Jin. Whenever you cast a spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand. I have personally witnessed Tide Spout Tyrant be ridiculous when you have copies of it, so you can be sure that this is an all-star in finishing the game. Because what are your opponents going to do when you bounce all their lands? Aetherflux Reservoir is 4 generic for an artifact. Whenever you cast a spell, you gain 1 life for each spell you've cast this turn, and you can pay 50 life, and Aetherflux Reservoir deals 50 damage to any target. We nickname this card the Death Star because that's just what it is. You just shoot your opponents right out of the game, now normally you want to be able to storm off when you have an Aetherflux Reservoir, but you don't need to do it in this deck because you can just create token copies of Aetherflux Reservoir and it's going to be very easy to get to that 50 life threshold. Mechanized Production is 2 blue blue for an Enchantment Aura, Enchant Artifact you control. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of Enchanted Artifact, then if you control 8 or more artifacts with the same name as one another, you win the game. I've always wanted Mechanized Production to be able to work, and it absolutely works in this deck because you can just keep targeting mechanized production to make more copies of it which means you have more protection so you can win the game on your next upkeep and nobody can remove it because you keep making token copies of it i love it and then lastly we have kiora best the sea god five blue blue for an enchantment saga first lore counter create an 8 8 blue kraken with hexproof chapter two tap all non-land permanents target opponent controls they don't untap during their controller's next untap step and number three, gain control of target permanent and opponent controls and untap it. I have included these two cards in this deck. You don't have to include them in, but they're very popular in a way to combo off, especially with mono blue. And that is the Isochron Scepter Dramatic Reversal combo. The only thing that you'll need with this combo is to have mana rocks that can untap with the Dramatic Reversal. But then you can make infinite mana, especially if you have an Aetherflux Reservoir out, you can storm off to infinite life and shoot them down with the Death Star. That's your personal choice if you want to play this combo. All right, and before we finish, I just wanted to mention, of course, if you think one Orvar isn't bad enough, how about multiple Orvars? Sakashima of a Thousand Faces and Spark Double can come onto the battlefield and copy our Orvar, and allowing us to have two of them, since they both can avoid the legend rule, plus they are, per plus they are permanent so you can copy them to make more copies of Orvar, I kept these for last because if you ever are playing against an Orvar deck and you see one of these come on the battlefield, you need to remove it immediately. 
because it will get out of hand on the next turn. I guarantee you that is my prophecy. Actually thinking about it, Orvar might just be ridiculous the turn after it comes out. I guess we'll have to see. But that is it for the deck tech, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see the full deck list, we will include it in the show notes below. If you have any recommendations for this deck or if you've played it yourself and found some really good includes, then feel free to comment them in the comment section below. Helps us out, helps the community out, and we love hearing what you guys think. Before you leave, make sure that you are subscribed, like this video, and feel free to check out all of our other content, including our gameplay videos, other deck techs, and our podcast episodes. And if you really, really want to support us, then head on over to patreon.com slash commandvalley. Consider joining up today and getting access to all the awesome benefits of our patrons. We super appreciate you guys and hope that you stick around for our next Caltime Deck Tech. Until then, I will see you ghosts later.